welcome to Australian Musician. Thank you. Um, I'm just wondering what kind of music you listened to growing up. Growing up? Yeah. Oh gosh. Well, I guess growing up, um, my music tastes were initially formed by my parents. So there was a lot of like old vinyls like Led Zeppelin and like folk stuff like Buffy Saint Marie or ABBA even. <laughs> so like it was really diverse. My dad was a big um, music music fan, popular music. And then I also listened to a lot of like Baroque stuff because my mum was a classical musician. So a lot of stuff like that. And then, and then you know, like the usual stuff when you're a kid, you just listen to pop on the radio. Um, yeah. <laughs> so how did you first come across electronic music? Electronic music. Probably my first memory would be XLF, <laughs> the theme from um, Beverly Hills Cop, I think, would have been. I, I loved that. I thought that was amazing and I still still like it. Um, but I think in terms of my first exposure to electronic music that I was interested in making, like that sort of clicked with me as this is a thing that I feel drawn to do, um, would have been when I was, when I first sort of started listening to things like Björk, and then through that, got into things like um, the producers like Tricky and listened to Massive Attack, Porter's Head, and, um, and then started listening to like Jungle and Techno and going to raves. I was a teen raver. Yeah. yeah. Um, Do you play any traditional musical instruments? Um, not exactly. I, so I sort of started out as a singer. So I guess my main instrument has always been my voice. And... I do play keys, but I wouldn't say I don't play classical piano. I play it more as a synth. So, yeah. yeah. So, who are some of the artists in the electronic music world that you're into now? That I'm into now. Um, I mean, honestly, the people that I'm listening to at the moment are probably people who I'm inspired by, who I know personally, who are kind of doing similar stuff to me, like Aphia, um, Becky Witten, she's a fantastic artist, um, Kaya, um, she's also an amazing electronic musician and they're, like me, they're um, people who make uh, like el electro pop, I guess. I mean, I also do more abstract stuff, but I'm, I'm really inspired by people like that. Um, I love Habits, they're also a local band that makes really interesting kind of dark electro pop stuff um, you know and then there's a lot of artists that come through mess that that are interesting as well you know like Suzanne Siani and um, she's fantastic she's um, well she's pretty timeless really yeah um, so in general what's the starting point for a piece of music for you yeah um, often it'll be like a just a sound that I come across, either a, like I'll be playing around with a machine, with a synthesizer, and uh, I might just have a transition or just come across like a really meaty sound that I like and create like a bass line or a beat and then go from there. Or it could be a melody, like a vocal thing. Um, it really, it's it depends so much. I basically just kind of pull ideas from everywhere and then start to build them up into tracks. Do you write music with a project in mind? Uh, yeah, yes and no. Sometimes I just write and I don't know where it's going to go and I'll come back to it and it'll sort of turn into whatever it wants to turn into. Sometimes I'm composing for <clears throat> sometimes I'm writing for like a theater project so I might when I'm collaborating with like a choreographer for instance I might write something specifically for them to dance to um, or I might be writing with a track in mind um, to eventually you know release as a on an EP or something but yeah it depends there's a lot of exploration as well like there's I think they all kind of feed into each other there's the more playful exploratory writing and playing around with sounds and then there's the refining so yeah it depends uh in two 
2017 you released uh, a single Give It Away, which was mm -hmm. a comment on control and in particular mm -hmm. male <laughs> control yeah. in the music industry or, or in life in general. Yeah. Uh, I, over the last couple of years I've seen a lot of work in, within the industry on that issue. Do you yeah. see that work and do you think the industry is changing? Uh, well, I think it has changed a lot um, since I first got into the music industry. There is, um, even in the last couple of years, as you say, like, uh, but yeah, looking back to 10, 15 years ago, it's it's a huge shift. Um, it still needs to change more, but yeah, it's definitely changing. I think it's something that you can't sort of decide, okay, cool, we're aware of it now, so it's all good. Like, I think it's something that we need to keep working on. Um, but yes, it is, it's shifting. I think we're in a process where thing, we're at a time where things are shifting more rapidly, but it's still part of an ongoing process. Uh, oh, so lately, um, just uh, earlier this year, a couple of months ago, I was producing an album for Yowo Music, which is a great uh, program for young women and non-binary people uh, so they have been running for a few years and they basically take teenagers and pair them with mentors and help them create bands and write songs and uh, so this year they decided they were going to release an LP so three bands uh, were put together and wrote some songs and yeah I was producing that and um, Anna Laverty was co-producing and engineering it and yeah that was a fantastic experience uh, and it really brought home how much I would have loved to have that experience myself as a teenager and I'm really really glad that programs like that are running now because they're just amazing. Tell me about your journey with gear, the first piece of gear you got and what you, <laughs> what you use now to create your music. Gear. It's funny, like I'm really into synth and I'm really into production, but I'm not really a gearhead. Like I like stuff for its functionality. Um, so I'm not really about grabbing the latest thing. Um, the first piece of gear that I owned, uh, it would have been like a, I don't know, just a computer count. <laughs> Cause I first started writing on Cubase on an old Mac and I think that probably would have been the first thing that I had. Um, and then, I mean really like my setup at the moment is really just like a good sound card. So I use Motu Ultralight Mark IV. Um, mics I tend to hire as I need them because I like to use really good mics because my voice is my primary instrument. So, you know, I'm not gonna, I don't actually have the money to go out and buy super expensive ones. So I will borrow or hire as needed. Um, I have a couple of synths that I use for gigging. Um, I use a micro cork and a micro brute. Um, they work well for me because they're really easy to transport and I have very tiny hands, so. Nano keys are good for me. <laughs> I know a lot of people aren't fans of nano keys, but I love them. And I use a Launchpad Pro, and I also have a keytar that I use, um, which is a MIDI keytar, and it triggers sounds. And so, I, in terms of like my performance setup, um, it's it's not it's not hugely complicated. It's a lot of it is just about exploring but in terms of what I actually record I well because I work at Melbourne Electronic Sound Studio I use a lot of the vintage synths here and I mean this isn't stuff that you can go out and buy unless you're extremely privileged so um, you know on my recordings there's a lot of incredible synths that I don't take on the road with me but yeah tell me about your role here at MESS uh, so I've been working at MESS since we opened I've been working as a supervisor, so uh, the studio supervisors basically uh, set up a machine for people when they come in and show them how to use it and troubleshoot any problems they might have. Um, you know, sometimes people come in and they've never used a synthesizer before, so sometimes it involves giving them a run through of what synthesis is, or just, you know, if they're on a particularly complicated machine, like the Buchler 200, be like, okay, cool, well, I will show you how to actually set up a signal path on this one. Um, and I've also been running workshops since we started as well. So um, I 
run sort of Synth 101 workshops and uh, for mostly for women and non-binary people uh, and you can you know that's sort of attended by people who have no experience with electronica and sometimes it'll be people who do and sometimes it'll be experienced producers but um, yeah it's a really great way to sort of consolidate or gain a bunch of knowledge yeah but I also do a lot of youth work as well uh, you're playing at Melbourne Synth Festival, you're playing the opening night concert on the Friday and yeah. performing on the Saturday as well. Uh, what can we expect? Uh, well, it's um, I'm going to be playing my synth pop, so I'm going to be playing with a live drummer and um, my my keys and my guitar and my vocals and my beats and um, yeah, it's kind of, it's intense epic synth pop I guess is the way to describe it it's it's all electronic um except for the live drummer and um <laughs> but she's incredible uh, she's fantastic so um but it's yeah it's sort of high high intensity sort of uh epic vocals it's pop but it's electro pop so if money was no issue what would uh, an emma fox stage mm -hmm. production look like <laughs> I think it would be, in terms of visually, <laughs> visually there'd be lots of lights and glitter and <laughs> I would have a bunch of synthesists on stage with me um, and lots of, yeah, I don't know, visuals and I'm not sure. That's an interesting question. I've never thought about that. But, um, you know, honestly, the, the biggest thing that I would love for money would be just I would have a roadie. <laughs> that would be amazing. They'd set my gear up and then I'd come on stage. That would be incredible. Um, <laughs> what are you currently working on and into 2019? Um, I've been spending a lot of time working on theatre and collaborations with other people lately. Um, but next year, I really, really want to concentrate on putting out a bunch of my own work. I'm still doing some collaborations with a choreographer that I have a long-term collaboration with. Uh, but other than that, I'm taking a bit of a step back from theatre. And so I'll be releasing a bunch of new songs and videos and working on more of my abstract electronica as well. Emma Fox, thanks for your time. Thank you.